In your wildest dream, you once at a time considered to buy a hatchback as your first car because of several you know, things. One of them would be the budget, two would be the ideal car for you. And I know hatchbacks are also one of the most sought after vehicles because they blend in with a youthful generation, uh, maybe the Gen Z's, and it's just one perfect car to start with. And in the category of hatchbacks in Kenya that are commonly bought, one of them is the Golf, that is the ultimate legendary hatchback to buy. The second one is the BMW 1 Series. The third one is the Audi A3. And recently, we have the Peugeot 308 that joined the bandwagon. Yeah, I know you guys are asking, what about the Mercedes-Benz A-Class? Okay, let's have the A-Class as well in the same category. But one thing that all these cars lose is practicality. You don't get sufficient practical space, especially at the boot. And if you're a person who considers practicality as one of the essential needs or demands when you're buying a car, then today I'm here to introduce to you to one special car. Luxurious, epic, gives you all the niceness of a hatchback, but with a lot of practical boot space. This is the 2016 Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake. to another special episode of Mambamboga and Aboda Boda edition and this is our midweek review and this review has been made possible by KDG Imports again Ukienda Pale KDG Imports opposite Prestige Tafuta Jamana itwa Ibra will give you a very fantastic deal on any car they have in stock thank you KDG for making this review possible for the longest time the entry level Mercedes-Benz has been the Mercedes-Benz C-Class but since 2013 the Mercedes-Benz execs sat down and decided, you know what, because we have a competition down below the C-Class where people are trying to buy cars based with needs and demands, why don't we introduce a new car? And that brought forth what we call the Mercedes-Benz CLA. It's a sedan, but this particular one that we are reviewing today is what we call a shooting brake. It has a different design, Pale Numa, which I'll be talking to you about. But this currently is your first sub compact luxury sedan stroke sh shooting brake entry mercedes-benz we don't consider the a class and the b class as entry mercedes-benzes i don't know why but everybody will tell you like a c class was the basic entry into the mercedes-benz lineup and one unique special thing about this car unlike the c class this car is front wheel drive so let's get into the front fascia, the design language of the Mercedes-Benz CLA. Of course, it is based on the A-Class and some sort in between there, the B-Class as well. So you'll see the design keys of an A-Class, you know, the Mercedes-Benz conventional grille with the logo, which features the Distronic Plus. You know, it get, helps you with um, cruise control, adaptive cruise control, a very nice sporty bumper, again just for a youthful look and a youthful driver. I think this is a car that Mercedes-Benz are sort of guys who don't do an extreme cute car and then they'll not do an ugly car, so it's always somewhere in between and that is one special thing I like about the Mercedes-Benz. So let's look at the side profile, what do you get? Of course, I won't forget, you have your normal HID headlights with an LED strip to give you better and awesome illumination at night. I love Mercedes Benzes for how they just make sure that on the road you get what you deserve. So when it comes to the side profile of the Mercedes Benz CLA and this particular one is the CLA 180. The design language as I said this is a shooting brake. So a shooting brake is not like a sedan. So you have a full-fledged flowing wagon style version of the CLA and that gives you two very important things. One, it tucks you in quite well in terms of practicality at the rear. At the same time, it gives you an awesome boot boot space. I'll talk about practicality when you get to the boot space, but the styling on the side is just beautiful. You have these nice lines that flow the way from the front and they just end up at the side door, uh, the back door, the rear door, and that makes this car look awesome. Your side skirt that, you know, I think they are trying to go for an MG-ish look on this car and that makes this car look awesome. Even though when you look at it from the side, in a car kama has kidogo kimpango eh? you know it's i don't know i don't know whether that is something you guys will like or hate but it looks nice for me it makes the work done at the front 
we have size 18 wheels and if you look carefully you can see they have perforated discs and that makes this car just look awesome especially on the side and anytime they do perforated disc it means this car can actually do a bit of performance and braking quite well um at the rear size 18 again running downloads so what's a special setup do we have on the mercedes-benz cla at the front we have the conventional mcpherson strut at the rear we have independent suspension mark link on both ends which makes the right quality of this car just epic and awesome let's talk about practicality so and this is one of the most important signature bit of you buying for instance a sedan version of this in comparison to this shooting brake and i know at this point is where we'll get into a bit of an argument because if you're a hatchback person and you love the awesomeness of an a-class i think this car gives you all the a-class vibes in the interior and on top of that it adds on to practicality and before i show you the practicality of the mercedes-benz cla the sportiness design that we find at the front finds itself again at the rear of this car you have your nice led taillights and there's a technology with mercedes-benz with their taillights if you don't know the technology go and watch the review of the mercedes-benz w213 the link should be here i explained quite well what happens with the rear brake lights or the taillights over mercedes-benz especially from 2014 onwards so the design language is quite good you have your badging here cla 180 and 180 denotes that this car runs a 1600 turbocharged engine so we'll talk about it when we jump at the front but you have a black diffuser with parking sensors the, you know the rear bumper doesn't look much sporty but it blends in quite well with very nice black appendages on the side just make it look a bit aggressive now, there's something that we always complain about Mercedes-Benz, but on this one, Wally S, they did the awesome thing that they need to do. So you have real exhaust tail tips, and they actually work. There's an exhaust tip there that functions. So dual exhaust tip. Just add on to the sportiness of what this car looks like. Practicality, an electric tailgate. If you have a Mercedes that doesn't have these luxury features, they cheated you, you bought a fake Mercedes-Benz. Maybe it was made somewhere else, not Germany. But anyway, so you have an electronic tailgate and what you get here is something that now you will not find on a Mercedes-Benz A-Class, a Mercedes-Benz B-Class, you will never find that. So you have the compactness of a hatchback, but a practicality of a serious, serious car. So if you buy this car in the configuration of a sedan, what you get here is 470 liters of boot space but what you have in the shooting brake is extra 25 liters of boot space so you get 495 liters of boot space and it doesn't stop there because if you floor the seats down that way and the other one as well because it can flow the way down both the rear seats can go down you get 1354 liters of practical boot space in a hatchback kind of looking mercedes-benz tell me where else you get that mercedes being mercedes-benz and having a competition with bmw on this platform we are competing with the one series had made a habit of making sure that all their cars were rear wheel drive and that is the entry mercedes-benz c-class but on this particular platform that was changed so what you have here is a front driven mercedes-benz cla and the advantage of having a front wheel drive car is fuel economy so what you have here in the engine bay is what we call the m270 and i remember i told you this is the same engine you guys call the m274 so if it's in a c-class or it's a mercedes-benz e-class or even the glc 250 it's called the m274 and because it's rear wheel drive so you have a propeller it's longitudinally mounted so it's driven by the rear wheels but in this particular platform is the m270 detuned down to 1600 cc of engine displacement turbocharged so that's what you get in this particular car and the good thing with this engine is it is just as big as the m274 so it gives you the reliability of handling all the pressure and the power that this car needs. In terms of fuel economy, this will give you anything between 13 to 15 kilometers to a liter. And I think that is quite commendable for our Kenyan needs and our Kenyan demands. What other engine options do you get on this particular platform? You get one quite legendary engine still on this particular platform. And that is what you still get in the A45 AMG, the A-Class. 
and that engine is the M133 and that that I think it's the most powerful 2 liter engine right now that we have in the market they go head to head and compete with the EA888 but that particular engine is capable to give you 375 hp stock without doing any modifications to it so you can also get this car with that particular engine alternatively you can get the M270 in two other configurations either the 1800cc or the 2000cc so that's what you get on this particular platform in petrol when it comes to diesel you only have three engine options you have a 1.5 diesel you have a 1.8 diesel and you have a 2.1 diesel the 2.1 is what we famously call the 651 it's a non engine it's an engine that you can find across most of mercedes benzes that's what you get so let's talk about the interior of this car and see how does it look and before we go into the interior what do you get as a transmission option pair to this particular engine so you can get this car in a 6 speed manual especially for guys in the UK or if you're shipping this car from the UK alternatively you get this car in a 7 speed dual clutch transmission we ski about the dual clutch that's what you get and one thing i can tell you about any dual clutch transmission be it on a Honda be it on um, an Audi A3 be it on a Golf be it on this particular car is their transmissions that are quite sensitive to service keep it maintain 60 to 80000 kilometers make sure you service it within that interval with fresh and proper fluids and even the filters are changed on time you will never have a problem but if you don't you're going to pay a huge price so let's talk about the interior of this car and see how practical does the CLA 180 translate in the interior before i check out the interior of this car and share how practical this car is i'm kind of digging this formless doors they bring back the subaru vibes that we had back in the days it just look awesome <sighs> instantly you get into the cla you know looking at it from the exterior you might think there is a bit of less room or less space that you're going into when you get into this car <laughs> surprisingly i'm 62 i remind you again but i think guys who are slightly above that will struggle with the headroom but you can see for a normal sized person like i am and normally let me give you a cheat code so apparently tunavanga nguo na wa japanese ama watu wa uk meaning this is not too fupi no wonder when we see a guy like bradley we make him a celebrity because he's a tall guy you watch it that's how bad we are <laughs> so bradley will not fit in this car but definitely he won't he'll struggle with with the headroom but i think at the front here he'll be not all right as well but for a normal person normal size person i think between uh, 5 inches or 4.8 all the way to 6 6.2 should be quite good comfortable in this car alcantara going on uh, with red stitchings which just makes this car look nice i think mercedes been try to make every little car they put out a bit luxurious to just give you a bit again this car is considered a subcompact luxury sedan or coupe for that matter so I think I appreciate the niceness that this car offers. You have your Isofix again for a family, a young guy, a young family this will be quite ideal. You have your Isofix points. Then in terms of oh, oh, you have your cup holders hidden here. So you can put your stuff there. I don't think there's anything else to talk about this car at this at this point. That's all you get when you're buying the CLA. But I think one selling point is in comparison to an A class i think this is a more practical version especially at the rear when you're hauling people or you're hauling your friends or you're hauling your family I think this will make an ideal ideal space let's check out the front of this car and see how does it stack up against its competition in any way possible this is basically an A class everything feels like an A class uh, the seats the bucket like feel they are quite comfortable as well they tuck you in quite well and i think there are a few things i like about this entire setup and there are things i don't like so one of the things that i don't like is this infotainment system it's a tablet kind of thing that hangs on the dashboard i don't know some people like it but for me it doesn't work i feel the one that i embedded into the dashboard look more awesome look more beautiful but it 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 works it works Oh, the space 
just doesn't work for me. But by all, by all means, this is a Mercedes-Benz. All the ergonomics around the touch, the drive, the paddle shifters, the drive-by-wire, Kila kitu, it's a Mercedes. Uh, the instrument cluster is an analog instrument cluster with uh, tachometer on the side and the speedometer on the side. And the center you have your digital cluster, which changes and shows different things around the driving dynamics of this particular car. So you can change, like you can reset your service. Right now it's telling me my service is due in 233 days. And that is because Mercedes has this thing where they count service. So at Igaruki service, now we park for, let's say, three months. Even if you're not driving the car, you know, Mercedes Benz is counting like you're using the car. So, when the time it's either based on time or mileage, so if you don't reset it based with mileage, it will actually bring up that pop up and remind you that you need to service this car within this particular time. Away from that, practicality, your normal, easy but spacious glove compartment. We have a storage here that can fit in. Oh, a bottle. I think it's special enough. You have your cup holders here again. I don't know whether they are too small. I don't know which one is this a cup holder. But I know there is an extension of a cup holder you can actually do here. That hangs out for both passenger and driver. There you go. Um, another storage there. Your smoking, your auxiliary port. Nothing else. Your dual, uh, dual climate controls. Um, you have them there. Everything here is an A-class. There is nothing much to talk about. But one thing that I really, really appreciate about Mercedes-Benz are they have small, small cues that they make you enjoy and feel, especially if you reason through the ownership of Mercedes-Benz. And that is what you get under this driving mirror. So normally, normal guys who have normal cars, mutawashia tazenyu hapa. So you have the normal ones, and you mutawashia hapa, which will point to me, it will point to you. But when you have the reading option and you dial that one, then you have this light that comes out of here. It doesn't distract you when you're driving. You can actually check out something while driving it and the light doesn't come to your eyes to affect the visibility that you have on the road. So I think I love this about Mercedes-Benz. Introducing these two extra lights for either the passenger or the driver just makes this car a proper car. One thing I like again is the reverse camera. Let me just start this car so that you can have a look. The quality is awesome. And when I say about quality, this camera that is here is better than what you get in most Land Rovers that will cost you anything above 17 million Kenya shillings. This is quite epic and you can change the view to wider or you can just have a normal view. That's quite, quite commendable for Mercedes-Benz. Your dynamic select and this one will perform. You have comfort, sport, individual and eco for your driving uh, demand. So based with what you're feeling and how you're feeling, you can select whatever you want. Heated seats both at the front, at the rear you have nothing and then the climate controls again you only get it at the front. For the driver and passenger seat you have memory seats but Ule Jamaoko, Hana, passenger you don't get memory seats. So there you go. Let me stop hitting my bumps. There you go. So what else do we need to do? You remember this? Eh, what a Toyota. You know you don't get this kind of <laughs> goodies. This can only be found in a Mercedes Benz. So you twist it to face you. And you know you can twist it. See? And now it's facing Mr. Bugo on that side. And I can blow cold air or hot air towards that. Epic. So the only thing remaining to do is let me drive this car and feel that does it really drive just like any other Mercedes Benz? Let me drive this car. 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 So how does it feel to drive the CLA 180? There are two ways you can drive this car. First one is you know, a calm drive, relaxed, howling your family, sensitive product, so you will not be in a rush to push this car. And at that point, the fuel consumption is quite awesome. And there's something interesting about this particular CLA. So this is the only car that was compared to the Tesla Model S. And the comparison came down to what you call the drag coefficient. The drag coefficient is basically the aerodynamic design of a car to reduce drag and in return improve fuel economy. So the sedan version of this car is said to have a drag coefficient of 0.22 and that is an equivalent to what a Tesla Model S has. And the Tesla Model S is the best 
in terms of you know the drug coefficient figure so being compared to that makes this car quite awesome but this particular one that i'm driving because it's a shooting brake it has a drag coefficient of 0 0.26 so it's not the same as the sedan version but you get the gist in terms of fuel saving capabilities this car still has the same so it will give you an approximate of anything between 13 to 16 kilometers to a liter and that's down on how you drive it and there's a big question that lingers in your mind about the reliability of the engine because it's a 1600cc paired to a DCT and I'll talk about the DCT when I switch this car to sport mode but this engine doesn't put out much power so you're only getting around 120 HP and 200 Newton meters of torque so that is not it's not significant it's not figures that you will say wow you know but for for what this car does for the weight that this car has i think the two combination of those figures makes this car a perfect drive and i'm going to show you just in a second but in terms of the driver feel the stiff the suspension is a bit stiff uh, i think they are going with the mg vibe but again the stiffness has an advantage or disadvantage it comes to aggressive driving which i know if you're buying this car you're competing with the v40 the 308 the golf of course a driver uh, owning this car will want to push this car and see how does it actually perform against uh, the rest we will do a 0 to 100 and just confirm how it performs 0 to 100 but for now before i switch her to sport mode i just show you how mercedes-benz has done tremendous steps in terms of improving their dual clutch transmission um, the build quality of the car is awesome it's a mercedes-benz even though it's an entry level but i feel the sound cushioning from exterior is good i'm not having a lot of noises coming from outside so that's good the car feels awesome the seats stuck in quite well comfortable very nice uh, the only thing i don't like is the infotainment system i wish it could tilt and do all those things but it's static and it's at like a tablet stuck on the dashboard and sometimes with the wrong side of the sun you'll have a lot of glares so for me that is not working so if it is embedded within the dashboard to me that would be perfect but everything else economically it's a mercedes-benz it feels like a mercedes it's an a-class by all manner of means so let me put this guy in sports mode uh, you go to dynamic select down here um now she's in sports you can hear even the sound has changed and when you put her in sports let's switch back to the manual mode now listen to this <laughs> she goes she goes she goes let me down shift ah that's nice again redlining but I don't know they have done good improvement in terms of the dual clutch transmission but I'll say this without missing my words I think the dual clutch in the A3 or the Golf for that matter is far much better I think Mercedes-Benz still has a long way to go in terms of optimizing their transmissions and this is something that will cut across most Mercedes-Benzes even the powerful ones uh, the, the GLC 63 all those I think where Mercedes-Benz loses is it when it comes to the transmission even the speed shift they have for those cars are not as snappy as you know as the comparison in terms of the DSG and, and, and even the ZF transmission so I think Hapa kuna, kuna a bit of work to be done so the only thing that we want to do now is confirm how does this car race from 0 to 100 does it match up to what the competition offers and would you buy this car do the 0 to 100 and enjoy all the practical aspect that this car provides some Mercedes Benz but with a lot of practicality kama ile ya filda ya matako boot so let me pack this car switch on my draggy so that we get this scientifically correct we don't want to miss anything Misha. guys who ask uh, this is the draggy device it's an official draggy you can see it and guys who say yeah, you know those numbers as make sense you know, we do it the official way so maybe if this one is lying but for us we are not lying so I'm connecting the device there you see it's connected we are connected 
and right now you're downloading the satellite perfect you guys are ready to do this there we go send to gear one two three and <laughs> she sounds cool. I love the way she sounds. Come on. Hey, the DSG kind of adds on to the vibe. So, there's something I've not done. Um, I've not done the braking. But you've done 0 to 100 in 10.27 seconds. 10.27 seconds, good. I know. Um, 1.6 turbo charged, 120 HP, 200nm. You can call that decent, right? Can I do a braking test? Just see how it breaks from 0 to 100. Okay, let me reset my data. And then we are going to pull again. Get to 100 and then break. There you go. And 100 and break. That's nice. Uh, 100 to 0 in 4.62 seconds. Okay. There are better cars that can break better. But again, this is an entry Mercedes Benz. So, I will not judge the car harshly. But I know there are better cars that can do better. Um, perforated disc at the front. No, I expected a bit more. But 4.62 is fair. Let's be fair to this car. So, this is a car that I think will fit into your daily hustle. It's a car that you can use as a family uh, and it's a car that you can also take out and just enjoy drives with your boys and your gang it's still do all that and you can do that with the three-pointed star i think that's the most important bit of all that for 2.6 million kenya shillings i don't know considering the a class being sold at 2.3 2.4 the b class is around 2.5 2.6 2.7 depending on the spec i think this guy is a bargain one thing i enjoy about this transmission however much it's not as snappy as what you get in let's say an audi a3 but it, it shifts click on the pedal it goes up just listen one two three go and we are up okay the software is getting better and better mercedes one thing with driving with pedal shifters is like driving a manual transmission so you can actually control the car braking and speeding using your pedal shifter for instance if i don't shift that's what we call engine braking so um, it's like downshifting on a manual transmission which is quite awesome so it gives you a leverage of control so if you want to brake you downshift the same time as you brake it just gives you absolute control and power over the car and that is such an awesome feel <laughs> that was a red light Downshift, downshift, ah, nice. <laughs> so let's talk about value for money. So how much will this car set you back? This car will set you back anything between 2.6 million Kenya shillings to 2.75 million Kenya shillings. And that depends with the quality, the mileage, and the options that you get because there are different options that and trims you can get on this particular car. What is the competition? So you can choose to get um, one series, okay? and deal with your three-cylinder engines on a BMW. Or you can move yourself to the Japanese side and get a Mazda Xela. Again, Mazda Xelas right now are going for 2 million Kenya shillings. In terms of practicality, the boot space of a Mazda Xela is 350 something liters of boot space. And I've just told you on this particular car, you have 495. Even if you are to buy a CLA, you will still get 470 liters of practical boot space who will buy this car whoever will buy this car is a person looking for a hatchback that has a lot of practicality and not only do they want a hatchback that has a lot of practicality they are looking for class of course the three-pointed star and they're all looking for something that will make them look and act the part and that is the value preposition of the mercedes-benz cla shooting brake so if you're out and looking to buy maybe an a-class at 2.3 million Kenya shillings, 
you just add 300,000 Kenya shillings, you go home with the Mercedes-Benz CL8. It gives you everything the Mercedes-Benz A-Class gives you, but with an addition of practicality. And to me, that is a very serious, serious value preposition. I've been your host, Ibrahim Toloi, and in, on behalf of the entire team at Conversation, behind the camera, Mr. Bugu and Fabian, and Fabian is the one who will edit this video. So, Bugu will share upgradiwa. Ali toka kwa ima na video, ana edit mambo ya muema. So whoever is giving you this version of this edit is Fabian himself, Fabian Munene, a very young, generous young man from... Fabian, you're talking about Fabian, you're talking about Rongai. So until next time, see you on another special, exciting episode of Kanisa. Bye-bye. Na mkumbeo kuchata na taini pesa. So mwona mambo imenisukuma huko Mercedes Benz. Chaza ni kama nyingi. Mwacha utiaji. Eh? Ama ni yacha ujinga. Sao. Bye. Poleni basi. Ruto wameongeza tax. Sao.